off. I might have just landed actually, not too sure. If you want to take an image of the picture and you can try it yourself, that's great. I'm going to stick it to my board now and in watercolours I'll put that at the top. Okay, I'm going to need to sketch. So I've got my glasses on. I'm going to tilt the camera down a bit so you can see what I'm doing. Hopefully I won't be in the way too much. Okay, <clears throat> like that. Right, I'm going to write in pencil first. Um, try and keep standing back. I've got quite a few um, things around me, like a, an easel and a tripod. But I'm going to try and draw the negative space and position this swarm in this beautiful, um, lovely kind of pastel colours that go down to the water and then we get water is always level so that's why you have a straight line this um this part of the wing actually disappears into a lovely white area and this is the other wing which is a lovely curve like that coming up to there then coming in it makes a, a really nice shape between the back of the neck it's like a half moon shape actually and then it curves away like that and swan's head is right at the end like that. if i'm a bit too over to the left hand side i mean this is the first time i've ever done anything like this so bear with me i'm trying to keep talking as well so you know what i'm doing uh this the neck's quite thick actually you got a lovely curve on it yeah um the wings feathers gets really nice shape something like that and the back of the swan quite big and then we get some shapes here where the feathers are and we also get a lovely reflection in the water which is there where the neck is and body which is there i'm going to be using a bit of salt okay uh, there's a lot of space there. I could have moved it over slightly, but in there by a uh, mistake. Uh, probably a little bit lower down. Anyway, when we sketch with a pencil, we're actually looking for the shape of things, we're trying to get things right. Yeah, and then I'm going to use a pen to um, put the ideal shapes in when I'm happy with them. And then the shape of the swan's beak. Uh -uh. This is beautiful. As it takes off, I could just see its eye. I've got my glasses on because I can't see now. I can't see close up since I've had my cataracts done. So that's the way it is now. Um, stand back a little bit just to see if my composition's okay a bit. Uh, the back of the, uh, like I said, it could have been a, a bit over this way, but it doesn't really matter. I can always crop the painting. Um, and the shape of some of those feathers. And the way that goes in to the back of the swan. Uh, you can't see its feet, but you can see some reflections in the water. Beautiful light or uh, shadows around the swan, the dark area. So I get a lovely curve of its neck, which goes in again and comes out again like that, and then creates this D shape. All right, nice and wide, not too thin. Right, so now I'm going to just sketch it in, nice and light again, because I don't want it to be too standy out it against the background. So I've got the shape of its head, which is curving like that. This disappears into a kind of lovely area here. Lots of little lines when you're sketching. And then that's this kind of reflection in the water. And we're also getting this shape, just like that. And we can do the reflection. Uh, you can always add the dirt bits around this one, and we're going to let it, uh, going to let it kind of blend into the water. That's the shape there. This is this lovely wing that's coming right out to that, and I can actually see underneath it in places. And then this one goes in. That's got a few feathery shapes, comes out like that. And then the back of the wings are a bit. Uh, so 
but like I said, this area is a bit squiggly where the wings are, the feathers are, so, and then that comes down and disappears into that white area, which is about here. Got a little bit of shadow there, and then you've got a shadow on the back where the wing casts the shadow. A few feathers near the tail, and water's always level, like I said, and then we get these curves coming kind of up. A few splashes we can put in. Uh, you can't see the eye even with my glasses on, so I'm just going to leave it like that. A few more ripples. I'll try and forget the other, there, and then I can just carry on painting and talking. Okay, now I get my trusty old eraser and go about pencil, and we're left with a very fine pen and mark. This is my reference site. Yeah. It's beautiful. Get rid of the rubber just. Uh -huh. Stand back to see if it looks okay. Yeah. See if you have moved a bit. No, still see it on the camera. Uh, could you do it with a bit more light? I might start, I might use my uh, spotlight actually right then so we can use a bit of wax so the wax I'm going to put on not everywhere we've got a little bit of light on the front of the head and the tip of the beak okay looking at the picture so they've got a lovely light it's curves around here uh, it's all white but I'm just going to draw a line I've got a lovely light at the front if you start doing that you're going to leave white everywhere uh, just wax everywhere and it will look silly because you've just got a white shirt so that's the top of that wing you can put a little bit there i've got some lovely feathery bits at the back and where this light's catching here and then as the wing comes in about here it goes a little bit lighter as well so that's quite light but i'm not going to leave it just white i'm going to keep it um and you can put a light around the shadow of the feathers. I could put a little bit on the edge of some of these bigger feathers because the, the, the light's just catching them. All right, <laughs> you can use masking fluid if you want. I'm getting my paints ready. So these are the paints I'm going to use. Uh, Bird Sienna, Elizabeth, Ultramarine and Viridian. And uh, might use a little bit of yellow in the head. Bird Sienna and yellow make gold. <coughs> it's a nice reflection. So what you're actually doing, we're taking away the, the lights from the picture. So we've got to make some lovely warm colours first. So I'm going to use burnt sienna, quite a lot of burnt sienna really, like I said. And then we're going to mix some camomile. Might do this actually before I start as well. And then we're going to mix some um, lizarine there, some nice purples. I'm going to use some ultramarine blue, give that lovely transparent blue, like that. I do use cobalt and we do use cerulean quite a lot, but not in this one. And then I'm going to use viridian green, which is going into the background of the uh, the water and what have you. Okay, okay. So the first thing I need to do is squint, I take my glasses off. If you think about the light catching some of these feathers underneath it's got this lovely warmth i might actually use some cerulean sorry uh into that area with a bit of yellowy and sienna so i want to get that lovely kind of uh, warm uh, sienna color uh, gold color into the at the top there and let that blend up you can let it go outside it doesn't really matter because what we're going to do is we're going to um paint the dark of the water around it yeah so i've got a nice we'll use a little bit of cerulean which makes a nice um, coolish shadowy areas like that. and we can add a bit of blue to it so on the wings of the dove on the wings of the the bird so we've got these lovely kind of uh, shadows here uh, we can let the warms and the siennas run together like that uh, as you're coming down the side of that uh, again, we don't have to worry too much about running into the water. We'll have a bit of pink, which is not pink, it's alizarine, into that area as well. 
just let it blend a little bit like that and we need very nice kind of uh, subtle colors uh, where the the um, the shadows are and the warms and the feathers what have you so the back of it as well we've got um, the back of the bird they've got a bit of kind of blues here just coming off from the water and we've also got it in the water so we can drag that down like this drag it out into the water because it's making a lovely reflection there and also in this area we've got a bit, a bit of sienna there as well i just add in a bit more while it's damp so because it's damp you get a better time to uh to lift off yeah lift off color and let the colors blend on the own there's nothing like letting these uh, lovely siennas alizarines so if you mix sienna and alizarine you get these really nice kind of shapes here and just leave let that blend together inside where the feathers are okay and i can do a few dark bits later i keep that nice white area but not too white we can have it uh, uh, kind of warm as well okay the last bird done more or less i got some tissue you need quite a bit of tissue and i also got some reflections in the water here so red sienna and a bit of that blue it's giving me some really nice you know the kind of uh, Payne's gray color in this water uh, using the side of your brush uh, it stops you getting fussy we can also drag it out a little bit and leave the the water as little brush mark, little marks so you get these little kind of your paper which is going to is bucking fur which we're using today and the blue at the back and underneath things like that okay keep your brush clean blend it whatever i'm not doing the head yet i can use well i could do actually i'll use while it's white light so i can use a bit of cadmium red and a touch of yellow just to give me the lovely warm uh, colours on the beak, which is bright yellow, so it's orange, isn't it? So yeah, that shape. Now I can put that in. <coughs> Lift off like this. I don't want any salt in the swamp, and that's going to be really lovely and light uh, against the background. Because again, you start to see lots of these different kind of reflections, especially from here, because everything's changing where that reflection hits the water and you can blend it with more water and whatever yeah uh, and then you when you put the dark bits in later it will just appear as if by magic all right yes forgetting there's nobody here so we can't talk to okay um a bit more of that cerulean and green cerulean and a bit of yellow make a lovely blue okay Right. and then i'm going to paint around it and the best thing to do really well i have a few more shadows so i've just seen a few so we've got the blue just underneath so i mix in some cerulean blue a bit of ultramarine which makes a kind of cerulean uh, cobaltish blue uh just under here we've got this really nice uh, blue on the a bit of the wing that's in the background and we also got the same thing here so while this is damp i'm just going to add some of this blue and pick out the shapes of your feathers and that like that and they can just see we're, we're getting these really nice cool shapes and warm shapes so the more you can do while it's slightly damp the better because the paint will run on its own uh, if you keep going into it with the, the brush you'll just create a lot of marks and you start lifting the colour off as well so we don't want to do that anyway yeah. we want that to dry a little bit okay put the pastel colours so you can see that yeah good <laughs> and then i'm going to wet the paper all over um i'm going to do it with a big brush I, I, i've got a little bit of a tilt so i'm just going to tilt it back because i'm going to use more um salt when i do this so you paint around the wing like that so all the background is very dark and we've got lots of different colors in there 
we've got turquoises, we've got blues, uh, one colour, we've got siennas as well, um, all around here. And the reason I do this is just so the paint will not run into the, uh, the bits I've just painted because I don't want it to. So um, it's better if you let it dry. Patience is a virtue and a lot of the time because I'm doing a video and I don't want to keep stopping it and starting it and want to do it in one go I'm just going to risk it and put it all in like that. So the background is all this lovely colour like that. As we get down here it's going to ripple again and change into uh, very dark areas in between and lots of salt. All right. So um, the shape so now we're going to mix some colour again. So I've got ultramarine there, we've got some meridian there, a lot of that. And looking at the background, we've got some warms in there so we can pick up more kind of sienna. Keep dropping my cloth. Uh, not used to working so low actually. I've got some sienna in there, which is in the background kind of here. And then we're going to greenish uh, and sienna colour here, which is in that lovely area around around the swamp like that and let it run don't let it run too much and um, while it's damp we can add colour and lift off and all sorts of things that goes along there like that. that's going along my edge where I've had a bit of wax there so the wax stops it running into areas that are, you want to keep clean so I've got a blue and a green on this side blue and uh, meridian sorry on this side i get that lovely turquoise tone like that. if it's too wet and it's running too much just blend it so it runs into it and not uh, everywhere like that. and i want to work into this quite fast because <coughs> we need it to um Need to dry quite quick as well. I'm going to work from meridian green and ultramarine blue mixed together, and then we've got this nice colour here as well underneath the bird. Uh, this is another turquoise down into the swan, and this is the bit where I need to make it go around the swan. Oops, got a blob, get the blobs off. Around the swan, around the back of the swan, like this, just to get that really nice dark. And the water is going to be lovely and turquoise here, there as well. Take the gloves out. Okay, and then more blue, probably. We can start adding uh, other, we'll use a smaller brush in a bit, other colours. So that's going to be a few ripples in the background uh, and then going darker and darker as we get near the swamp. Um, I also want to paint the shapes. So it's uh, meridian and blue again for this lovely dark shape around these. Uh, yeah, around the bird, around the, the water and in between things like that. Because that's dark. It's, uh, it makes the light stand out, won't it? Like that. And we've also got this part, which is quite dark actually, as we are as well. Take the blobs off. As we the blobs. Okay. So actually it does stop it from running a lot in places. And then we're working back into that with some dark colour. There's quite a lot of um, darks in there. Not very dark, but I need to go darker. So it's thicker pigment now, less water. Start adding other green. Other green and viridian make a really strong dark colour, as you can see. So I can paint the shapes around the swamp. So this is viridian. Mizarine on ultramarine and you paint it around the head so I can con concentrate a little bit more on a very very dark area like that with a 
non shaky hand yeah. non shaky hand um, the ripples underneath the beak and we get some ripples uh, and the front of the head and over here as well got these lovely ripples in the water so we're going really really strong now so i'm using a bigger brush i want to create bigger areas and a lot more kind of alizarine and green and blue black and turquoise colors and here we're getting these very strong shapes right. let's go off into this area now it is quite runny so you know it would have been better leaving it to go out a little bit but uh, you shall persevere. More Elizabeth. Not to be frightened of using your paint up when you get to this point. Uh, the thick the thicker the paint the better that white's gonna stand out like that. As it starts drying you need to just make sure it blends into the rest of the water over there. Yeah. Uh -huh. You can spray it if it's, uh, if it's some nice reflections in there. Yeah, uh, salt's doing some nice work on this side. It is a bit of a sienery green as well, so it was a little bit warmer. Uh -huh. Warmer green over this uh, around the bird's wing. Uh -huh. Okay, blend it. I'm always tempted to sing, but uh, I'll not sing. Pull off the colour, add colour. So purple, give me the purple as well, red and blue. Oh, God. I've got a big run, that's the one I didn't want to have, where that is, never mind. Happy accident, it's got a uh, collar around its neck. <laughs> you can always take it off a little bit. Hawkinson's not too bad, so I like just blending bits, just taking it off. Um, here I've got lovely thin areas of pigment. For the ripples in the water. I'm going to go a lot darker, but actually in a bit, because that's going on the hair. Um, more ultramarine, civilian glue, sorry, to get this lovely kind of reflection. And use the side of your brush. That just stops it again. Being too fussy. Let's see. Take the light off. Drag that into the and again this is where I make a cup of tea but I can't because <laughs> video's playing. So here I've got a, a purple and it just paints around the shape of the back of the swan. Bringing out that light we've got a nice dark area there as well. Could pick that up a little bit. Drag it into the water. Uh, uh, uh. Um, it's a really, really, really strong colour most of the time, yeah. And it is quite damp, so I am looking at this again to make these really nice and blendy. If you actually look at them, I can lift colour off to give me a little bit of lighter tone, but I can also. Uh, put the darks in first. I'll just leave a little, a little gap here and there, uh, not to worry too much about it. Just the strength of the colour, which is alizarine, is very nice for making darks and purples. Okay, so there, this is nearly dry paint. Uh -huh. I've got a really nice shape here and here. 
again, just more of the lizarine, ultramarine, touches of green and blue to give me dry brush strokes. I'm going to come down to the water and to bring out these, through these ripples. That's going to be a nice strong tone here in the water. Yeah. Some of these textures are quite nice. You can either leave them in or I can drag them off. It's up to you. I'm uh, just leaving the shape of the bird. The bird I've not touched since I painted it. I can't believe I'm still talking after half an hour. Half an hour is not bad actually. Uh, so we get a quick one done within this half an hour and then after I can start doing some editing online, that'd be great. But I know what I'm doing. Um, and then the shapes of some of these lovely kind of reflections in the water. All very, very dark, yeah. Lovely kind of dark tones. Um, just to bring out the shape of the birds. Okay. Uh, because this has got a lot of salt on it, it's still uh, running and it's not dry. It'll, not, it'll take a little bit longer to dry actually, but I can drag colour out. So if I want to do a bit more dark tones around there, this is green and blue again. Hardly any water, a lot of pigment from my palette, uh, just the, straight from the palette to give some ripples. Uh -huh. um, again, I can drag out and drag off later. Some reflections, yeah. If you want to use more salt, that's fine. To stop it running, actually, in place. <laughs> and as we're coming down here again, it's a little bit warmer because it's got some sienna in this area of uh, where the ripples are. So I can just drag that into there, like that. Pick up that. I'm going to use a little bit of gouache afterwards to just bring out that water area and it is drying a little bit now so that's helping quite a lot um, so this paint, this shape goes that way and then it goes that way and you get a lot of these kind of lovely darts around the feathers tail feathers so there's a lot of lizarding in that like a lovely dark and then we drag that out again into a ripple here and there. Right, keep standing back as well. I don't actually want the paint to run and make big drips at this point. I want to um, make definite marks where the end of the bird is, the wing, and where it drags into the, the rest of the water. So I've got a bit of wax there actually, which I've just gone over, but didn't matter. Uh, just keeping that pure white on the edge of the wing. Um, so I do need my glasses see things close up that's all uh, fabulous thing having a cataract still but I can't read about now anyway I get my glasses this week anyway there we go that's about that's some lovely things happening um, we can have more of this watercolour here this water that's coming forward um, and then I'll do some more darts in there we can add a bit of warmth like I said, add burnt sienna to it, you're going to warm up the green a little bit like that. And it's just a lovely wash. And then when we get to here, it goes light again. So I can just drag that across, leave it. Okay, like that. Look at the blue. I'm going to paint the head of the swan as well. So on the back of the swan here, there's just a little bit of blue where the shadow of his neck is <coughs> and we've also got some lovely blue shadows here so um, keep a clean bit clean my palette I've got some more cerulean I'm going to keep it clean cerulean because I've got this shape now that's going to uh, pick out the feather shape so we're going like that that direction so we can see and then we're going to round some of these feather shapes so from a distance, it should look like feathers. And this is a nice cool shape, just around that one. There and here. And that goes into there. And I paint the wax. 
pick up the wax. That's where the wax is there. And I've got some more kind of darker tone in here and just around that one because it goes a little bit shadowy. So they're just little glazes mm. uh, coming down in there and then the shadow on the back again. Uh, so, yeah. so this, um, that area, and the back of the back of this one and then the shadows. So the wing and then that curves into the rest of the bird. <coughs> it is a little bit warmer on top of the bird actually here because the sunlight's catching it so it's not pure white it's just warm colour that needs to dry lift off a bit um, um, we'll paint the head because that's quite dark so I'm going to use Glycerine Viridian and a bit of Ultramarine Very thick paint because I don't want it going anywhere and I've got that lovely shape here like that Shadow Dark shape And around the cheek and it just goes into the beak like that and then that lovely curve up there of the beak and the front of the head which disappears into the shape of the swan. So you get a nice dark just underneath the beak. I'm also going to glaze that because it's got a little bit too um, too light when it's dry. So we're trying to do it with get the colour in and then we glaze over it and it's gone and it dries lighter because Waterclouds all the dry light. So more green, more alizarine. Looking at this area now, I can paint the shape of some of these reflections. You need to stand back. It's not easy for me today because I'm not, I'm, I can't get really far back from the picture because I'm in my studio front room in the house, hotel then, so the mask. But it's much brighter in here than it is upstairs. So. Like that. I just want to leave some of that green, the lighter green showing. Okay. So this is dry brush stroke. Now you have, you must have heard of dry brush stroke. It's more or less paint, like I said, from the tube. And by adding this now, I've hardly done anything to the bird because I wanted it to just be lovely pastel colours but by adding the darks around this one like that, it's going to lift it as a white subject yeah it's still going yep the video's still going yeah uh, <laughs> I'm a bit unsure of how long I get with the video I mean this is on my phone so if I do a live one, how long do I get before it switches off? If it switches off, somebody said it didn't. So unless my battery runs out. So again here, beautiful dark. That's giving me a really strong dark there, which ripples into the rest of the water. Uh, there's no white there actually, but I've got this really nice uh area where you've got some of these ripples against the green <coughs> you don't have to take it all the way down but uh, sometimes it's nice to leave it and just have some white um, we can do a bit of glazing there as well because that is a bit more of a sienna colour so beautiful ripples on the water like a cup of saucer uh, so at top of the bird I think it just needs a little bit more dark and we'll have a look at the back. So here, we've got more kind of picking out the shape of that wing, and then some ripples. I'm getting a bit sick of saying ripples now, but never mind. And then the head is more or less encased in very dark tone. 
Okay, you can have a go at this. I know it's a bit quick. Just show you that. And then you can put them online. That's the idea of doing all this. We put them online, we can look at them. Uh, we're not going to rip in pieces, we just say that's lovely. Except for <laughs> uh, something like that. So, uh, you get your flat filbert. I uh, love this brush actually. And we can lift off uh, some areas where you're getting the ripples. Like that. It's got a lovely point on it. This is that side point. And it's a dry brush, so we're using it to pull the uh, pigment off the water. You won't get it back to white paper, but uh, let's just start using goulash. We don't want to use goulash. Uh, we can use the goulash for uh, um, little white areas that we've missed, like splatter in the back of the swans where it hits the water. I'm just going to go in here because that's nice and dark. Uh, again, as it comes around here, it's dark on uh, the back of the bird. Uh, these ripples just disappear from, from this sharp dark area like that. <coughs> into this area. It's all about contrast, yeah. Uh, you'll probably use, if you get tube paint, it's much easier, you squeeze it out, you can use it straight from the tube. Um, you don't have to kind of wait for it to get wet before it starts coming off in thick clumps. So you want it to come off straight away. Uh -huh. uh, back of the swamp. And then I like that one. I might just do a bit there and leave it. Lovely reflection, dry brush. And again, that's coming down here. And I get this kind of negative space of where it's falling at the back here. And it's a broken, kind of a broken edge, isn't it? Because it's variegated, you know what I mean? It's just going around this shape of the swamp, the back of the swamp, which is a reflection in the water. Like, so okay, and then we do, do the same with that. You can drag that out, leave some white bits. All right, and then the front again, love the little shape there, and then this shape blends into that shape, just goes into the white bit of the swan. And then again, sharp edges there like that. Lovely reflections. Light to dark. Nice and dry now. <coughs> and I just want to pick that out so I'm going to add a bit more sienna. Just to warm it up. So here we've got again kind of the shape of the light on the water. <clears throat> so I'm using ultramarine blue with a bit of sienna. I get a kind of grey shape then. Like that. It's just warming up as well. So the sienna is warming that area up. Yeah. And then I can bring out some of these bigger shapes where they warm under the wing. So it's you have to be very careful with this. I mean this is the point where you would over kind of overlook things. You just start doing too much. And like I said, I'm gonna go over the neck, have a bit of sienna. Mix them together to make gold. Uh, don't touch the outside if it's still damp. Uh, like that. It is still damp. A bit of salt there. And then I'm going to paint that lovely warm area of the neck. And blend it. So you use a brush, you take damp brush, touch the edges so you, 
you get a nice blend so it's not kind of hard edged you don't want it to be hard edged do you nope don't want it good and my blue there is coming down well if you can tell me how it looks from a distance i'll stop but uh i can't actually see it at the moment but that's the side of that uh, wing blend it squint blend it back of the neck it does have a bit of a shadow there actually and then the dark on the floor so whatever you see on the top you get on the bottom because it's reflecting it so here i've got this really nice shape put this into that into that stand back keep your brush clean and more warm at the top there huh? keep your brush clean that's going slightly darker at the bottom squint if it doesn't work this i won't play it up so it doesn't matter But it does work. I'm going to leave it. <coughs> All right. So I'm going to use a little bit of goulash, actually. Uh, get my tin. So I've actually got it out, but I'm not. So I've too much again. Goulash. Yeah. Get a tube of it. Wonderful thing. Just want to add a bit of kind of warmth as well. Keep that brush clean. You just want to keep the warm. Warmer colours, warm. If they start mixing, that's why I start with warm colours. If they start mixing with uh, <coughs> your cool ones, your blues and whatever, you'll end up with a, a kind of mucky mess. That's, yeah. you, you, you lose that balance. Just here, I'm going to kind of just drag that in because I feel like it's warmer there while it's hitting the sun. Yeah. You can take it off again. You think you put too much on. We'll just keep that light across the top of the bird. All right. Um, hang on. Forgot something. I just need to paint the D shape again because, as you can see, it's gone lighter, and I want it to go darker, especially down here. And that's uh, going to bring that out. Beautiful water colour. Which could say it like Alvaro says it. Oi. That's rigidity. That's what he says. Alright. Uh, get rid of some of this white at the front because you don't want this white. I uh, go over your paper actually. Not there. Uh, a little bit of cooler colour underneath the neck because it's actually getting shadow from the water. Keep it thick paint again. Well, the idea is to paint it with a reasonable transparency which is not easy because you don't want to go mucking either but yeah uh, so i would have actually like i said brewed up had a cup of tea and then come back to this but uh, we can just bring out some of these shapes you're probably all shouting at me now what are we doing here To bring out some of these lovely shapes the back of the wing and it's slightly it's just a little bit darker as it gets to the edge like that and i'm ready for a cuppa actually let it dry I 
I've uh, not used any yet. A bit of warm, oh, that's, that's a bit of sienna, a uh, bit of cabin yellow actually. So, because that's dry, I'm just going over with some cabin yellow just to warm it up so it's getting a nice reflection there actually. And just drag that down, yeah. Here's some of your ripples. You can do a little bit here as well, where you got that ripple like reflecting. Yeah. I need this salty area to dry thoroughly. And then I might, if I don't like the way it's, uh, the way it's taller, the tone of it, so the drain not looking, I will go into it again. Nice like the curve it, dry brush, and then just goulash, yeah. So goulash, and uh, you can blob it on like that. Or you can add a little bit of water. So people have a little bit of problem getting the right amount of water. Yeah? But you can just kind of splatter it. Like that to give you splash marks. Or you can paint bigger marks. It's going all over slow, so it kill me. Uh, you can go bigger marks. You know, if you want to get some more of this water here. That's uh, that links with that. So you get a really, really nice. Things like that, and I know the purists would say, "Oh, goulash." Well, I don't mind. I think it's uh, it works for you, and it puts a few. Little... Well, you don't start painting all the bird, and just put some of the light back that you may have lost in places. Then uh, I can't see any reason why not. Uh, you can have it in the water at the back, like that, or here. Or you can mix it with a bit of viridian green. Uh, and blue so that'll give you this we've got a nice kind of uh, lighter water uh -huh. in between these ripples I've tried to pull off a few there but you can add them as well I'll go this way make sure they kind of link up and then we're going a little bit Later, you can splatter. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna leave that. Let it dry. That's enough for it. Going nearly an hour, so I'm probably all exhausted. Take the um, tape off. Like this. Oh, I'm doing swans. There's nothing to them really. Is it a swan or is it a goose? <laughs> yeah, I forgot you there. There's nobody talking, nobody nattering at the back. Can't hear anyone. It's fabulous, there's only me here. <laughs> yeah. How's that? Let's have a quick look. Bear it down a bit. I need an easier way of doing that. That's it. Put it down a bit. Get it straight. And there you go. The flying swan. Or we're just taking off swan, I should say. And that's it for today. Thank you. I might do another one. I'm getting better, actually. So uh, see you again. Look at me, brother. I've got a bad odor, sorry. <laughs>